It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. I especially love it when my listeners, my subscribers write in and ask me to share thoughts or review an article, and that happened this week, and I appreciate it. So thank you, Lisa, for sending it in to me. So I'm going to go ahead and review this article. So this article, our blog post, if you will, it was headlined, What is the Agile Mindset? And it's funny because I have been leading in with this in every one of my advanced Scrum Master and advanced product owner classes for quite some time, talking about where Agile comes from and and the difference between having an Agile mindset and embracing a specific set of practices to execute to work towards that mindset. And I find that when people, when I tell people that Agile has a lot to do with culture and how we embrace things, and it has to do with making critical choices and how we think and how we make decisions. Agile also has a lot to do with how we collectively uh, formulate the way that we are going to complete work. Now, over the course of the last, I'm going to say 20 years, I've seen so many of the process frameworks go in place. And the thing is, a lot of them come, but many of them never go. And everything is out there from lean systems thinking to Kanban to Kaizen to Deming theory constraints to to product development flow to Cinefin to Crystal to Clear to Scrum to Kanban to to you, you name it, it's out there, right? Test driven design, uh, you know, uh, exception test driven design, feature driven design, uh, the Mikado method, design thinking, and of course you got all the scaling. You got safe and less and discipline agile delivery. I could go on and on and on. My point is someone out there was doing some form of agile. Fact. They got to a point where in their execution, they said, you know what, what we're currently doing does not cover or does not discuss what do we need to do in this situation? So it's like having a recipe and um, I like it. It's going to the grocery store with a recipe. If you have a recipe, And you go to the grocery store and you get all your ingredients and you go to get the last ingredient and they're out of the last ingredient. Uh, The question is how many of you go and put all the other ingredients back versus how many of you go and Google and try to find a substitute ingredient that you could use instead of that ingredient to make the recipe just as yummy, perhaps not with the original intended ingredient. So for me, I look at the word mindset and I say, it's definitely elusive. I've heard a lot of people say, We should practice an Agile mindset, or you need to understand the Agile mindset in order to be Agile. I mean, this all sounds great if you're the shaman sitting on top of a mountain passing down revelation, but what do these people really mean? What's the difference between, I hear people say you should be Agile as opposed to do Agile, or whatever the case may be, and and it's it's just, it's puzzling to me, right? So he goes on an article to say, So what do they mean? And what exactly is a mindset? Uh, So he goes on to describe what a mindset is. The word mindset is defined as a set of beliefs and attitudes that determine how someone thinks about something. If one has a growth mindset, for example, they believe that they can improve their abilities and intelligence through dedication, hard work, and uh, lead to a love of learning, and over time, become a better person. I teach a lot about having a growth mindset, and I think that's a strong, strong definition. Okay. The phrase about being agile versus doing agile is directly related to this idea of grasping and embracing the agile mindset. If you are simply taught some of the mechanics, have a big agile board with stickies, do your daily scrum meetings, move cards across the board, use a tool like Jira, call requirements user stories instead instead of requirements, Um, estimate everything using story points. If you focus on all these tactical things, you're not going to unlock the full potential of what Agile can really do for you. You're not going to see it all. So my challenge is to discover, is, is there such a thing as the Agile mindset? And if so, is it singular or is there plurality? So if you think about mindsets in general, A mindset is a manifestation of an individual's beliefs, attitudes, and perhaps behaviors. Um, If you look at the definition of culture, a culture is a group of people's collective beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. 
So this is different for a reason. Culture was nothing more than the sum of all of the conversations between the people who work together. If you think about it from that perspective, this is a profound statement. When you reflect on it, it makes you feel like that these definitions basically mean the same thing. Our culture is who we are, what we believe, and what we say and do. Um, making sure we have a mindset that is the same focuses on all those very same topics. It focuses on who we are, what we believe, and what we say and do. I do actually agree with this article when he calls out. He says there's definitely more than one mindset or culture that we need to understand, learn, and internalize in order to really embrace the Agile mindset completely. I like to think of the Agile mindset. Oh my goodness, I use this exact example. I like to think of the Agile mindset as an umbrella above representing many different related concepts. To appreciate the nuances of embracing the Agile mindset, there is, of course, um, it requires some study, some initiation, some figuring out of what's going to work best for your culture and for your organization based on the types of products and services that you build. It's not a one-size-fits-all thing. So I thought I'd rattle off a few of the different mindsets or cultures uh, based on this article that, uh, that the author, let's make sure I get his name here, Brian Link, says that um, we should focus on. So there are, there are a handful of mindsets here. We're going to go ahead and list off some of these mindsets because I think they're rather interesting. So the first one's called an iterative mindset, where we focus on creating value in small iterative steps, allowing for early and frequent feedback on each piece of work and help eliminate waste and build better products faster. That sounds good. Be data-driven, evidence-based, and use that data to decide what you need to do more of and what you need to do less of and what needs to come next. That's brilliant. Easy, right? The second culture is a product culture. Uh, this is uh, where you form a long lasting, durable product team that reflects on the company's focus, vision, North Star goals and purpose. And you have a top down vision that influences the team's roadmaps and day to day work. They prioritize diligently, build and support only so many products at a time. They limit their whip and they do whatever they're doing well. Then you end up with a customer centric mindset. This is where it gets interesting. Include the big picture product vision and uh, an appreciation for why, uh, so that you understand what matters the most to your users before doing anything. Don't ever guess or assume what a customer wants. Be more customer driven and empirical about it. What's amazing here is I can tell you countless stories about times where we went to the subject matter expert who claimed or said they know everything the customer wants, and when we turned around and built exactly what we perceived the customer wants, the feedback we got from the customer, of course, was it's not exactly what I had in mind. So it's just really interesting to see how that can switch real quick. So you need to understand what they want, but also why they want it and be empirical about it. Yes. OK. So how about a culture of learning? Team members share knowledge. They make learning a priority and they invest in communities that grow people and skills that benefit the company and benefit the organization. All failures are first attempts in learning and opportunities for us to grow as long as we aren't doing anything too catastrophic. Uh, next, we have a culture of experimentation. This is a design thinking mindset that's utilized from idea formation throughout delivery. Instead of requirements, think hypothesis first. And what's the smallest thing we can deliver, or smallest uh, program we can execute to deliver some value so we can apply those learnings into our teachings, right? We need to make sure that we aren't afraid to experiment with new ideas, try new things, and uh, focus on the design thinking mindset, the culture of experimentation. How about a culture of continual improvement? Teams are empowered to change and improve their own processes. Self-reflection, transparency, courage, and respect lead to sustainable value delivery and better results quicker with higher quality and better customer engagement. I couldn't agree more, right? This is exactly what we teach in class, that these are all things you need to consider. And then finally, a culture of psychological safety. So people will not be punished or humiliated for speaking up with their ideas, questions, concerns, or mistakes. This breeds uh, for greater innovation, inclusive collaboration, and a greater flow of ideas that can impact the product, services, people, and the entire company. So those seven mindsets are awesome. 
And they're definitely tools that you could put in your toolkit so that you are ready for whatever happens when your race car enters the pit. For those of you taking my class, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Sometimes I refer to the Agile framework or the large scale Agile uh, as being more of a parent child relationship, if you will, where Agile is a greater umbrella and it has all these different ways of doing things underneath it. So we need to make sure that we understand and can focus that um, there's only certain tools you can bring into the pit with you if you're in a race environment, right? And those tools rarely change. You need things to quickly change the windshield, quickly change tires, refuel the car. There are very basic necessities in a pit stop. But if the car needs a new engine or a replacement transmission, it needs to go back to the, to the bigger shop to do that. So for me, I think Agile is the big picture shop. And the uh, pit crew and the pit stop is the iterative flow of what we're doing in order to help make things right. So I hope that's going to do it for you. Uh, Brian, excellent article. I'll drop a link to it. Uh, somewhere in the, somewhere in the description here. If you have a topic you want us to cover or something you want us to review, please feel free to reach out to us. Learn more at agiledad.com. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.